Hi everyone, welcome to a new video about .NET MAUI. Today I will talk about monitoring your applications, your apps, your .NET MAUI apps. Many of you have probably used or still using App Center, but as you know, App Center will retire early next year, so we need to find a solution. And one of the solutions can be to use Azure Application Insights. There are no SDK for .NET MAUI, but there are .NET SDK. And I have built an open source project years ago that logged the data there, but I never really used it. So now I decided to go back to that project and made the SDK and made the library customized for .NET MAUI and see if I can do some improvements. But the problem with Application Insights is that it's not customized for an app. There are no good views showing the data the way we as app developer want it. So I decided to build a small WebAssembly app using Blazor that are visualizing the data the way I want it. So I will show you that in this video too. And that application is of course open source too. So you can use it if you want. So Tiny Insights started as a wrapper atop of the App Center I think even Google Analytics, so that you can have multiple providers. If you want to have some data to App Center, some data to Google Analytics, for example. But now in the MAUI version, I have focused on Application Insights. It is possible to build it out if you want to, because everything is built with interfaces. So you can customize it however you want and create your own implementations. But in this project, I have only the application insights provider. If you want to see my old implementations, you can go to my old repository that are also on my GitHub with the name Tiny Insights. This repository is named tinyinsights.maui. Let's start taking a look at the website I built. So here is a WebAssembly app that I have uploaded to Blob Stores, and you can use this URL if you want to go and try it. And here you have an application ID and an API token that you need to sign in. But to get the application ID and the token, you will go to the Azure portal, go to your application insights resource and go to API access. And here you have the application ID and here you can create a token. You to check only the read telemetry because I don't need to write anything from this website. In the library, we'll use the connection string for handling writing to the application insights. So, okay, let's go back to the website and we will sign in. And here, this form is handled like a form with password, so it will be saved in the browser here if you want to, so you don't have to uh, get the API token every time. And no data is saved on your device. This is a WebAssembly application, so the application is downloaded to your device and the data is read from the application instance resource every time, there's no data cached, at least. So when you close the browser, everything is gone. Click open, and here we can see crashes. I'm happy here because I have no crashes for today, but um, when I show errors, you can see exactly how it will look with crashes too, but I separate them and that's just a flag in the data that separates them. And here you can have some filters, what operating systems, how many days you will see back. So we can go to errors and here we can see I have some errors, but most of them are errors that happens because of a token has expired, for example. So we can change here to seven days. We can see the most recent errors. And here we can go to see more details. We have a stack trace, affected versions. We can see a recent event that happens before that, what view they have shown. We can go and see all the properties, for example. So we can have all the data. So that was errors and crashes will work exactly like this. And then we have page views. So you can see how much the app are used. We have events, like app start is an event that I'm logged. So I can go here and see events per day. So you can see this app is started six times every day. You can go to the users and see how many unique users and users per country. And I will probably continue to work with this and build out more information in this website. Then we have dependencies and here are tracking all HTTP calls to the server uh, with unfailed dependencies. So you can see here, oh, here we have one for get session. Okay, 
wonder why that fails. So we go and see the details. And here we can see all the actual cause that fails. Okay, it's a missing ID here. So that's the problem. And the result code is 500. And also here we can go and see all the properties to help us find this. And now if this information is not enough, we can always go to application insights, uh, to logs, and we can search the data here. We can query the data, so to say, because everything are inside of here. So for example, uh, we can query exceptions here, just like that. And we will get the list with all the exceptions that happens the last 24 hours. So, but how to use this in the app? Yeah, if you go to GitHub, I've added some instructions here. So the first thing you need to do is to install the package tinyinsights.maui.appinsights. And then configure it in the Maui program.cs and say .use tinyinsights and pass the connection string. And the connection string you will find here in the Azure portal right there. So after that, you can track events like page views, custom events, and exceptions. And you can also pass some data, but I will open Visual Studio Code and show you my example app here instead for scrolling this GitHub. So if we go to Maui program here, you can see how I set it up here. We have the instrumentation key, and here you also can do some customization, what you want it to track. So for example, uh, track dependency, track events, errors, page view. By default, everything is on, but if you want to disable tracking crashes, for example, you can just write false here and it will not track the crashes of your application. But probably you want that if you don't have another library tracking caches, of course. So when we use this, we will inject this iInsights interface and then we will just use it like this, like track page view. We can pass additional data. We can track events. Also here we, we can track additional data if we want to, by passing a dictionary with strings. Uh, we can do exception tracking like this, track error as async. And also here we can, can add more data by sending a dictionary. We can also track dependencies like you have in Application Insights for a website, you're probably used to that. The easiest way to do that is to pass this Insights message handler to the HTTP client. Then everything will ha be handled automatically for you. So it will, so you'll get, get duration if it fails and so on. Uh, and there are also another way to track dependencies, but I don't have that here in the example application, I think, but we can go here to Get up, and I can show you here. If you want to, you can just create a dependency tracker instead by doing this insight dot create dependency tracker. What type of uh, dependency it is, the name of the dependency, and then the full URL. Uh, that is what you could see here. For example, I just have the name, like the endpoint, and that, and I have the full. URL here, and that is because I want to handle all the get sessions uh, together. I don't want to have uh, every single one in this one. I will see that this endpoint have 18 failing dependencies, for example. And you can have a using here, so it will track this dependency and when it go out of scope, it will close it or dispose it. But if you have code before the dependency tracker, uh, are out of scope, you can also call dispose yourself. So this is how you use Tiny Insights. This is an early version. The NuGet package is a pre-version, so you need to search for pre-versions. And if you have feedback, please send it to me, create an issue on GitHub, and um, I will try to fix it. And also, if you want to contribute, you can of course do that too. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you later. Bye bye.